Hi everyone, welcome. I hope you are doing good. This is fourth video on our series on Ansible for Absolute Beginner. In this video, we are going to talk about Ansible variables. In this video, we will cover what is Ansible variable, how to use Ansible variables within your playbook, different types of Ansible variables, Ansible variable precedence in your playbooks, registering Ansible variables, then we'll also talk about special kind of Ansible variables, which are called magic variables. And we'll also talk about Ansible facts. So let's start. Okay, so in Ansible, variable is not different from your any other programming language. For example, if you talk about normal computer programming language, a variable is a value that changes based on the inputs or conditions provided to the program. So in Ansible also, a variable is a value that you can use to store information and that can change based on the inputs that you provide to your playbook. In Ansible, mainly we use variable to manage differences between the systems. So for example, if we are managing two different servers using Ansible and they might have different requirements. So for example, here you can see that if we have, let's say four hosts, host one, two, three, four, and in host one and two, we need open JDK 11 installed, whereas on host three and four, we might need some other, let's say open JDK 17 version installed. So using Ansible variables, we can achieve this. And this actually helps us because we don't have to write Ansible playbooks, separate Ansible playbooks for these two group of servers. We can use single playbook to manage all these four servers, although Java version requirement, for example, is different for these four set of servers. So a variable stores information that varies between the systems. Variables in Ansible are your key value pairs. So like any other YAML syntax, a variable, uh, the left side of your column is the variable name and the right side of the column would be your variable value. So that's how you can see here. It's variable one, which has value one, variable two has value two. So that's very basic uh, definition of your Ansible variables. Now, in Ansible, how do we use variables? In Ansible, what we do is we use Jinja to templating to view and read variables. So you don't have to learn a lot or worry about Jinja 2 for now because we are talking about absolute beginners right now. But in the advanced course, we'll uh, look into Jinja 2 templating uh, in a bit more detail. For now, understand that if you want to use print or access Ansible variables in your within your playbook, then you have to use Jinja 2 templates with your variables. So let's go back to our terminal and let me show you what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I have a bunch of uh, playbooks uh, written here for you to demonstrate today's video. So let's open this one for now, ansible string variable.yaml. In this playbook, as you can see right now, last time we talked about hosts, right? So host can be your group of server or a single host. So we'll also talk about this later on uh, when we talk about facts within Ansible. And here we are passing the variable to our play. So we are saying my variable and the value is please subscribe to my channel. And within our task, if you want to access this variable, we have to use Jinja to template to access the variable. So you can see right now here to access the variable, we have to use left curly braces and then right curly braces to access the variable within our playbook. So now if I go back to the terminal and let's run this playbook. So the playbook name is ansible string.yml and hyphen i inventory.yml. So here you can see that the play started at web servers uh, against the web server group and the task is to uh, print the variable. Here you can see the task was to print the variable. We were using debug module to just display the content and the message was my variable. So the message got printed here is please subscribe to my channel. Now you, I can change this variable to let's say call YouTube channel. And if I run, rerun the playbook here, the variable now is changed and the output is now changed as well. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel is the output. 
So that's your very basic definition of how to use Ansible variables within your playbooks. So you have to use Jinja2 templates to access the variable and we can define the variables using where's keyword within your host scope. There are different ways to define the variables. We can use the variables. Uh, we can define the variable in our inventory file. If you remember in the first video, we talked about that. But in this playbook, we have directly uh, defined the variable within the play and the variable uh, is your key value pair. So the key is your variable name and the value is the content on the right side of the column, which we get, uh, which we can access using the Jinja2 template. So this is how to use Ansible variable within your Ansible playbook, very basic usage. Now let's also talk about different types of variables. So currently, if you see in the previous example that we saw, if you notice, this is your string type of a variable. So what we did is we defined a variable called my variable and the content of that variable is a string. So this is your string type of variable that we can use within Ansible. So a string variable can be a string of characters like we talked about earlier. We can define it in the inventory playbook or we can also pass it as a command line argument. When we talk about uh, Ansible variable precedence, we'll also look into an example where we pass the a variable using a command line to our playbook. Second is your number variable. So we can also store integer or numbers in our variable. These variables can also be used in mathematical operations if you want. Again, similar to your string variables, we can define these number variables in inventory playbooks directly or pass as a command line argument. Let's see an example of integer type of variable. So now if you can see here, we have a playbook running against the local host. We have defined the two variable number one, num two values is 10 and 20. Again, key value pair key is on the left side, which is the variable name and the value is on the right side, which is your variable value. So we have defined these two variables. Now, we can access these two variables within our task using Jinja2 templates. So now you can see the task name is add two integer variables and the debug we are printing the sum operation of these two values. So let's try to run this playbook. So if I now run this playbook, you can see that the, the output message is 30 because in our case, the number one was 10, number two was 20 we can change it to 1000 also if you want and now if i run this playbook the value of the output is 1020 which is again sum of these two variables so this is your integer type of variables within ansible that we can use also for mathematical operations if required now the third type of variable is boolean variables these contains true or false values most often these are used as conditional statements similar to any other programming language mostly. Let's see an example of a boolean type of variable. Here you can see that in this playbook we have defined a variable called bool underscore where the value is true. So first we are going to print the boolean variable when the value is true. The second task is only executed when the boolean variable is false. So you can see that this is the when condition that we can use within our playbooks. This is similar to your if loop in any other traditional programming language. So what we are saying is when boolean variable is true, then print this. When boolean variable value is false, then print this. So this is your if condition similar to if conditions, if I can say. So in this case, since the Boolean variable value is true, the first task should get executed and the second task should get skipped. Now let's let me clear the screen and let's run this playbook. So now here you can see that within our play, which was run against localhost, print the Boolean variable when true, this task got executed and print the Boolean variable when value is false, this task got skipped. So let's change it to false now. 
let's save it and let me rerun the playbook in this case you can see that print the boolean variable when value was true got skipped whereas the print the boolean variable when the value was false got executed and we see that the value of boolean variable is false so this is your example of boolean type of variables that we can use ansible within ansible and mostly these are used in your conditional statements okay the next type of variable is list variable so if we want we can also store list in variable within ansible so the list is basically your ordered collection of values so ordered is important because when you loop through your uh, list variable the loop would work in an ordered way so now this is our playbook to demonstrate your list kind of variable again we are running the playbook against our local host we have defined a variable called prerequisite underscore directories and in this case this variable is a list kind of variable so the value is ordered collection of items so prerequisite directories first is your apps then u01 u02 and logs next what we would do is we will first print all of these values stored within our list variable uh, then we will print only the first value within that list just to demonstrate how to use a particular value and then we will also see how to loop through the values of a list variable within ansible so let me run ansible playbook ansible list variable dot yaml this is our playbook so now here is the interesting thing to know the first task was to print all prerequisite directories which was basically printing everything that we had under the list variable so we had apps u01 u02 and logs these were the directories that we wanted to print these were the values that were also stored in this uh, list variable second task was to print the first directory from the list so here you can see the first directory was slash apps now if we want we can also print the second directory from the list if i clear the screen and rerun the playbook you can see that uh, that in this case the second directory was u01 that's why that ordered list was important because the values are ordered and they will always appear in a certain order in which they are defined now the third task is mostly that would be useful in your day to day activities how to loop through your list so for that purpose we use loop function to iterate over the list so in this task what we are doing is we are debugging or rather printing the content of our list so one by one so what we would do is we would use loop function to iterate over the list and the list name is prerequisite directories each of these iterated items we are printing using the message so now if you can see here create prerequisite directories for remote host your first value got printed first then the second value then the third value and then the fourth value so this will always be executed in this way because this is your ordered list so now if you really wanted to create a directory we could have used a file module to create these prerequisite directories on the remote host so this is your example of storing a list as a variable within ansible and using it okay now the final type of variable within ansible is a dictionary variable in the dictionary variable we can hold a collection of key value pairs again key and value can be of any type and that means it could be string or integer or float values okay let's try to understand this by using an example so this is the playbook to demonstrate dictionary variable so again we are running this on local host and in this case we have defined a variable which is of type dictionary the name of the variable is club and the key value pairs within this club variable are your name which has a value liverpool country again is a key value is england manager jurgen klopp again this is key value pair captain and top scorer so this is your example of a dictionary variable within ansible next if we want to 
get the content of this variable how do we get it so here if you can see we are printing the dictionary variable values again we are using debug module to print these values now if you can see that club name is club dot name so here club is your variable name dot key value key is your name and the output would be the value so to get the value we can use variable name dot key name and that would give you the value of your particular key within your dictionary variable that you want to use similarly the country is your club dot country which is your variable dot variable name dot key name again club dot manager which is again variable dot variable name dot your key name similarly we have club dot captain and club dot top scorer let's try to run this now we are running ansible dictionary variable dot yaml here you can see that uh, we printed the dictionary variables club name liverpool country england and manager jogan klopp captain virgil van dijk and top scorer bomasella so this way we can store dictionary as a variable within ansible and use them within our playbook now let's see if we want to if we want to change the variable name let's say we make it i don't know club 1 in this case if we try to re uh, rerun the playbook you can see that the task failed because it says uh, the club is undefined because when the ansible is trying to execute this debug task it is failing to find the club variable so that's why your variable name is important and the and the way to access the value is using the variable name dot key name so i hope now you understand or probably got a little idea about dictionary type of variables within ansible and how to use them this type of variable is quite useful to handle little complicated data within your ansible okay now let's talk about ansible variable precedence so if you remember initially i mentioned that we can define ansible variables within inventory we can also define ansible variables within the playbook directly and if we want we can also pass variables directly to the ansible playbook using command line so let's take this string variable playbook as an example now if you can see here what we are saying is we are trying to run the playbook against web server hosts so if we open this uh, inventory.ini file we have web server group which contain web1 as the host which is basically our local host and it has a variable defined called my var my underscore var equal to web host var and then we have a group variable also defined which is called my var underscore web1 group var so we have same variable defined at the host level called web1 host var same variable defined at the group level called web1 group var and the same variable defined within the playbook called my var and I, now if you remember when we demonstrated the string type of variable you remember the play, the variable that got printed was actually this so let me go back and now if we run this playbook oh, okay i need to provide the inventory sorry so now if we run this playbook you can see that the output that got printed was please subscribe to my youtube channel because what happened although the variable is defined at the group level as well as the host level the precedence was that the variable defined within the playbook would have higher precedence as compared to the variable defined at the host level and the group level now what we can do is if we just remove this from here so in that case in that case your host level variable will take higher precedence as compared to group level variable so now you can see that since we don't have any variable locally defined which says uh, which has a key as my variable so ansible took the value from host variable which was again my variable equal to web un underscore host var which is what got printed here now let's also remove this from here and if we re rerun this playbook now 
it went back to your group variable and in this case it printed the group where as an output because your group variable has a least precedence now let's uncomment this and let's uncomment this as well and let's do one thing let's try to pass a variable as our command line so we can say so now what we are doing is when we are running the playbook at the command line we are saying we are passing an extra variable called my var and the value is vc tech talks here although the variable is also defined at the playbook level as well as the host level as and the group level the highest precedence was taken by the variable that was passed to the command line which is called my var so in this case it printed vc tech talks rather than printing please subscribe to my youtube channel so this is a demo to show you how variables precedence takes place in ansible and you can define a variable in more than one place but certain places will take higher precedence as compared to other places now let me copy this link and let's go to this link so this is your again docs.ansible.com official uh, documentation for ansible and they have uh, this link to describe the variable precedence so here you can see that extra vars passed as command line takes the highest precedence then we have include parameters roles set facts uh, set facts so on so forth so the least uh, precedence is your role default when we write role create the default values they have the least precedence uh, but the highest precedence is your extra vars passed as a command line argument like we did in our case we passed um, the extra variable using hyphen e and uh, that that always won the precedence so uh, you can go through this document uh, to read more about ansible variable precedence but uh, mostly mostly you don't have to remember them all the time you should have little bit idea that uh, you can have the same variable defined in multiple places but you can override the variable based on the precedence order okay uh, next is registering an ansible variable so up until now we have seen how to use ansible variables within the playbook uh, using jinja2 templates then we talked about different type of variables next let's talk about registering ansible variable so for example let's say you are doing something uh some task within your ansible playbook and you need the output of that task you want to store that in a variable and then use it later on in your playbook so how to do that so that we can do in ansible using registration of a variable so here you can see that in this playbook or rather let me go back to the vs code and open ansible register.yaml so here you can see that we are running the playbook against localhost we are not gathering the facts and we are running a task so let's say we are we try we are trying to read a content from a log file so what we are doing is we are running a shell module and we are saying okay let me cat the content of temp dot uh, temp sample dot log file then we are using a register keyword this is important to register the output of this command so this task whatever it does the output will be registered and saved into this app log variable now this app log becomes a variable okay so this is your dictionary type of variable so the output will be stored as a dictionary type of variable and now what we want to do is we want to get the standard output of this command right so what we are doing in the next step is we want to print the content of this log file so what we would debug is we would say okay my variable name is app log dot the key that i want to get is the std out so let me try to show this to you and then we'll also look into the other uh, details of that uh, that variable so if i run ansible playbook ansible register dot yaml okay right now it failed because the content i don't have anything uh, here i didn't create this file so let me create this file 
so now this is the content of our file let me read on the playbook in this case what happened in the first task it read the content of the file and in the second task it, it printed the log so because we wanted to just get the std out now just uh, being curious let's see what are the other values available in this dictionary variable so instead of just printing the std out we can print the whole log so let's run this now here you can see that in this case app log is a dictionary type of variable which has certain keys and then values so you can also see the command that was run by this uh, task the time was it failed false or true return code 0 or non zero so these are your boolean type of key value pairs and later on if you want you can do uh, use these return codes to proceed to the next task so you can use for example when condition return code is 0 uh, print success when return code is not zero print whatever you want to do but you, you get an idea right so registering a variable gives you this capability that you can write or you know control the flow of your playbook now in this case although we were just focused about reading the content of that file so we just printed the std out but we could have used any one of these keys from this dictionary uh, variable so this is the way to register a value of a task in a variable and then use that variable subsequently within your playbook so if i change this back to std out this will just print the std out part of the playbook rather than printing the the the, the whole dictionary variable okay now there are certain inbuilt or default variables within ansible that me and you can't use for our day to day operations these are called special variables or magic variables so if i open these links okay so this this is the first link which gives you the information about the default inbuilt variables available within ansible there are lots of them and each one of them has a uh, certain special characteristics or you know properties about it so you can read about them mostly in terms of special variables we use host vars group group names and inventory host name these are most commonly used magic variables so these are inbuilt variables within ansible that ansible provides by default and we can use them within our playbooks without having to define them anywhere so we don't have to define them we can directly use them within our playbooks so let's see some of them so let's continue with this same playbook in this case now you see this playbook i'm running on local host i don't have these variables defined anywhere not even in inventory file i am not even going to use the inventory file while running this playbook so i don't have a variable defined inventory host name i don't have a variable defined group and we don't even have a group name so so let me just do that let's run this playbook again or maybe in fact i'll run it with inventory.ini so that we can read the uh, the groups available because otherwise this value will be null because in our case we have a web one part part of one group called web server but we don't have any uh, special variable defined so i just wanted to clarify that but what i want to show you is that the output would be there because these build these variables are inbuilt variables within ansible already defined we don't have to define them that's why they are called magic variables so now if i run this playbook here you can see this is our printing the log from the previous uh, topic that we talked about but the debug output is interesting you can see that inventory host name automatically the value is local host groups automatically the value comes as web1 so these are your magic variable for example this inventory host name prints the host name against which the current task is being executed so let's say you want to log certain things that installing java on xyz host so how to achieve that right so you can use these magic variables similar to inventory host name you can type installing java on inventory host name and that will dynamically print the 
exact host name against which your playbook is currently installing java for example right okay similarly your group special magic variable will list all the groups and host in the inventory and you we can uh, iterate through them if you want so again uh, this is the documentation available from ansible and they they talk about each of these uh, magic variables in detail mostly you won't be using all of them uh, most of the time but you still need to have little idea about these special variables and make sure that you don't define your own variable which is named uh, as same as these one of these special variables uh, called magic variables okay last thing is ansible facts uh, for this video and then we'll wrap it up so let's say if you are running a uh, ansible task against some server certain things about that server for example a distribution name time zone how many disks are there what are the mount points what is the python version on the remote host right all of these things are called facts about the remote host which ansible sometime needs to know in order to do certain task on the remote host so if you remember up until this point each of these playbooks we had defined gather facts as false right so ansible has this built in functionality that we can use to fact uh, to gather the fact about the remote host so let me open the uh, ansible facts uh, playbook for you this is the demo i'm going to do in this if you notice i have a playbook running against the local host and i'm doing gather facts uh, facts as true once we do this the gather fact ansible will gather the all possible facts about the remote host that it can get and then one of those facts we can use within our playbook so for example as soon as we do gather facts as true a variable gets created for us this is again ansible magic variable called ansible facts we don't have to define it anywhere we just have to say uh, gather facts as true and this is again your dictionary variable so then we can use different keys to print the certain uh, versions sorry certain facts that we want to get about the remote host so for example in our case we can use python key to get the python version of the remote host kernel version of the remote host or uh, distribution version of the remote host so let me not print this uh, whole thing let's just print the the sub facts uh, or you know uh, the dictionary keys that we want about the remote host so let's run this ansible playbook okay now it's done let's recap so in this case we had a task called gather facts and in our case it says okay although we didn't define the, this task anywhere if you see under the task we are directly printing the values but we didn't have to define a task specially because uh specifically because we have the gather facts as true so ansible interpreted this as a task and it gathered the fact about the remote host for us and stored it in ansible facts variable and now you can see that printing the discovered python we got the information about the python available on the remote host which in in our case is the local host again we printed the kernel version this is mac os so that's why the kernel version matches and the distribution mac os x so okay so this is example of gathering the facts about the remote host so you don't have to run special command to get the python version or uh, get the distribution ansible will do it for you as part of gather facts module so if you can see here these are the different types of uh, uh, facts that ansible can gather about the remote host ansible architecture ansible cmd line and so on so forth so if let's say for example you get want to get the ip of a remote host you can get ipv4 ipv6 uh, single or multiple ips associated with your remote host and so on so forth so these ansible facts again you can see is your dictionary type of uh, data so you can use your uh, dictionary variable dot key name to get the content of your value that you are interested in so that's your uh, ansible facts that you can get using ansible without writing special task or commands against the remote host i hope now you can explain little bit about ansible variables different type of ansible variables inbuilt magic variables and ansible facts if you are liking these videos please consider subscribing to my channel 
you can add comments about improvements if you want any regarding these videos i'll talk to you soon thank you for your time bye for now